What's going on you guys? It's Ginger on Wheels here again. We're out on the InMotion RS Midnight from Voro Motors. We're gonna do another day in the life video. I got a couple errands to run. Hope you don't mind coming with me. So I'll roll the intro real quick and we'll get into it. So right now we're going to American Eyeglass Repair. This is where I'm gonna go get my sunglasses fixed because I'm going on vacation. I'll film a video when I'm there, but you won't see some content from me for a couple weeks. I also wanna to talk to you today about something that borderline ruined my channel, but I don't have any hard evidence. So I wanna see what you guys think. The problem with my sunglasses right now, the lens keeps popping out of the frame. I got prescription sunglasses and I'm definitely gonna need them where I'm going. And this American Eyeglass Repair Place, the guy's really friendly there. He's always helped me out, sometimes even for free. And I'm gonna see if he can adjust the frames on my glasses to get the lens to stay in. It's about 5.30 at night and I suspect there's going to be a lot of traffic so we're just going to try and skip all that by riding the scooter. How does that sound? Sounds great to me. That's why I ride these things. We've got the RS right now in speed mode 4 with dual motor so if I want to I can really give it the beans. But we got traffic here. We're going to go ahead and skip all that. Go! That's one thing you'll notice that happens on scooters. People will try and be polite and stop and uh, end up causing more harm than good. So on my trip to South America, I've got like a 40 something hour flight. I've got two really long layovers and a couple eight hour legs on the plane. It's gonna be pretty brutal. I'm kind of prepping myself physically and mentally for that. I got some new shoes, we got some new shirts. I'm pretty excited to go, but definitely do need these prescription sunglasses fixed. First and foremost. Oh yeah, let's give it some beans here through the intersection. This guy in front of me is speeding for sure. Speed limit's 30 here, he's going 45 too. I guess everyone's trying to get home from work. It's one thing you gotta watch out for when you're riding scooters, during rush hour anyway. People are gonna be speeding, they're gonna be mad, they wanna get home, and they're not looking out for scooters. So you gotta look out for yourself. Like this car on the right, is he gonna pull out? I think I'm good. You have to be extra observant of your surroundings. Is this car gonna turn left in front of me? Nope, we're good. He saw me. I've got my PEV firelight on the front here and I've also got the RS headlight on, plus all the cool lights on the bottom. So I think I'm pretty visible right now. It's not quite fully dark yet. It was a beautiful day today, but I had to stay inside and refilm my uh, kickstand video. I made a video and I installed the kickstand backwards and got immediately called out in the comments. So I was really quick to fix that. But we got the new revised video out. Is this guy gonna turn left? Nope, we're good. Well, now everyone slows down. Why are we slowing down now? Look at that traffic on the freeway. Brutal. I can ride with one hand on the RS because we got that steering damper. I just turned it on a little tiny bit. Send it. Yeah, this is all traffic we're gonna avoid on the way home. I hope this glasses guy can fix my glasses today. They do close in like a half an hour though, so I don't have high hopes, but the guy seems pretty nice. And as far as I know, if you've got the tools, it's a pretty easy job. So hopefully he can just whip it up and get her done. Let's ride in the bike lane, Red Prius. And that makes for a very dangerous situation. All right, we're gonna turn in here to the Houghton Center. Hopefully the eyeglass place is still open and hopefully the guy can just fix my glasses real quick. I'd really love that. This is my first ride today with the uh, Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones. I haven't really adjusted for wind noise yet, so I really hope it's not too bad. If you're watching this video, that means I deemed it wasn't that bad. Let's see, where's the glasses place? Ah, uh, yes, it's secretly hidden in this one little door that says Academic Link. We're gonna lock our scooter up over here. I realize it's not the most secure situation in the world, but I've got my fingerprint activated Bluetooth lock from pevoutlet.com, so hopefully we can just strap onto this little rail here and then no one will be able to take off with the RS. That would be devastating, wouldn't it? All right, so here's our folding lock. We're taking out the fingerprint reader. Touch your finger to it, we get the green light, and then it becomes unlocked. How cool is that? It does have a key backup, but I didn't bring the keys with me because I don't need to. All right, it's all locked in there. Cover up the fingerprint reader. Turn off my firelight here. Let's go inside and see if the glasses guy's home. I've got really bad eyesight, so I have really thick lenses and it's hard to find frames that will hold the lenses in. And the lens keeps popping out of these bad boys. I don't know if you can see how thick that lens is. It's crazy. We got the glasses fixed. 
They didn't want me filming inside without corporate's permission, so I can't show you any of that. But the guy fixed them for free in like five minutes. Freaking love this place. Apparently it's a franchise, American Eyeglass Repair. But if you ever need your glasses fixed, go there. That's my go-to. Heck yeah. And the scooter's still here, what do you know? Maybe we'll go for a little scenic route on the way home because that was way faster than I expected. Thank you, American Eyeglass Repair. Gotta take the lock off. We'll slide open the fingerprint reader. Give it my thumb, oop, wrong thumb. Got the green light, unlocked. You can pick up these locks at pevoutlet.com. They're like 80 bucks on Amazon, but I sell them for cheaper on pevoutlet.com. FYI. Give it the old folderoni with cheese. Good to go. I like those locks because you can't cut them with cable cutters. You gotta have a uh, angle grinder, which is a lot more obvious that someone's stealing something. I like to think that someone would say something if they saw that when I was gone. I got my kickstand adjusted too from the last video. Check that out. Not falling over anymore. I, re I raised the suspension to the uh, third setting out of four. I was kind of hoping it would get softer and more, a little more plush, but it didn't really do that, unfortunately. It's still pretty pretty stiff suspension, which it needs to be because the scooter is 140 pounds, but we're going to be testing out some uh, different springs and shocks on the scooter later, and we'll see if it adjusts the rideability of it. Oh, it's starting to rain. No worry. The InMotion RS Midnight is water resistant, very water resistant. You can see my headlight here. That's the uh, PEV firelight. We can turn on the headlight for the RS too. We get that little middle beam there. All right, this is the part where we get to skip all the traffic. We're still in speed mode four, dual motor. So we're gonna have all the torque and speed if we need it. Got the twist throttle here, quarter twist. I wish it were a full twist, but it's not. A little bit harder to modulate than the full twist, but the full twist is a lot more dangerous because when you're gripping the scooter, you can accidentally whiskey throttle it. One thing I haven't tried with this suspension is adjusting the uh, preload. So maybe I'll get a spanner wrench and do that soon. You know what we could do to skip this traffic completely is just go through the neighborhoods and take the pedestrian bridge. Maybe I'll try and do that. Yep, we're ascending. Too slow, Joe. Yep, starting to sprinkle for sure. If there's any drops on the GoPro lens, I apologize in advance. I may have just passed the road for the pedestrian bridge, so... Because the InMotion RS Midnight has such a giant battery, 40 amp hour, 72 volt, we're just gonna take the long way home, which involves a, a little gravel trail, some shortcuts. Well, I guess in this case, long cuts. Shortcuts if you're in a car though. And we'll have kind of a fun ride. How does the fun ride sound? I like riding for fun. I was working all day. I was shipping out orders for PEV outlet. I remade that new video. I got a bunch of stuff ordered from Amazon for the trip. I was talking to a mechanic who's working on my conversion van right now. LAS Auto in Kirkland, Washington. If you're looking for an honest mechanic, go there. I love the guy. I think he works with his dad. And I don't know how they're so cheap. They're like a third of the price of any other mechanic. He replaced my rear brake lines. He replaced my pulley tensioner, some spark plug, and all that was 350 bucks. And the check engine light's still on in my van. And initially he just called me and said, hey, I cleaned it, it looks good. The check engine light isn't on anymore. When I went to go pick it up, the check engine light was on. So after a couple more days, he called me back and said, yeah, your ECU's fried. The whole computer for the van dead. And that sounded very expensive, but he told me, yeah, I can get you a new one for 300 bucks. It'd be 150 bucks to put it in and program it. So 450, I could get that fixed, but I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. I might try and fix it myself. Oh, things are going to get a bit tricky here. We're going to turn left, right, meow, and we're going to go down here. Get a little off-road action on the RS because we got the suspension raised up, why not? Maybe I'll point the firelight down so it's not in everybody's eyeballs though. No humans? Oh, send it? Oh, 40 miles an hour off-road? Don't mind if I do. Can we get 45 without dying? Yes, we can, 46. I don't want to be going that fast though because if I crash, it's gonna hurt and I'm gonna be hurting for my vacation. Doesn't sound ideal, really. Give him a little horn. Thank you. It's so hard not to go fast on this thing. I love the way this thing rides. It's so comfortable. The deck is so long and the handlebars, I can raise or lower them to whatever I want. Oh, they're building a ramp? They're building a, about frickin' time. 
They're building an actual ramp here on the right side of the road. Is it done? No way. No freaking way. I used to have to go like majorly off-road up a super steep area of the hill. There's no way this is done. This got finished in, I haven't been here in a couple months, but they finished this entire ramp in like two months. Metal grates though, and they're wet. So I'm gonna be very careful because I got street tires. We're extra luby and slippery right now. That's so cool, they built this ramp, heck yeah. Major inconvenience of that trail was you couldn't get back onto the main road easily. So we have to cross like this. And then we have to wait in the bike lane over here. Oh wait, we have a crosswalk. Okay, we're good to go. Heck yeah. They thought of that too. Send it. We get our own dedicated bike lane through here. So you gotta be really conscious of people turning with, especially with no turn signals like that van did. It may seem on camera that I drive recklessly, but I've got my head on a swivel. I'm always watching for cars and what they're gonna do or what they may or may not do. Look at this new apartment thing. That's so ugly. And there already was a lack of parking. Now we just have absolutely none. Oh, what's that? I'm on a scooter? He saw me. He gave me a little wave. Shaving off the minutes here, folks. Trying to get home before it gets fully dark because the uh, GoPro doesn't do that great on this hyper view in the dark anyways. White car, oh, stays in the turn lane. How fast can we get this baby? Oh, 56 miles an hour, not bad. Not bad at all. There's probably rain sprinkles on the lens. I apologize for that. Let me see if I can help you out here. Oh, we got the green arrow. Let's go, baby. This Range Rover going zero miles per hour with no one in front of him. This is why I don't like to drive. Idiots like this. You have like six car lengths in front of you, sir. Yeah, I don't have time for any of this. What's it called? It's called the InMotion RS. Ginger on wheels on YouTube. 60 miles an hour. No joke. Ginger on wheels. I got red hair, so I'm a ginger. Okay. <laughs> like I was all about the scooter trying to skip traffic. He wanted to know about the scoop. Anyway, the thing that happened on my channel, I ran a Google ad for one of my, uh, what video was it? It was the Roadrunner Pro video. And I promoted that video for my YouTube channel. And then I canceled the ad. And that was like five months ago or so, four months ago. And ever since I canceled the ad, views and subscribers on my channel plummeted. They went off a cliff. I'm getting very few views, almost no new subscribers. And it's like the most depressing thing of all time. And I have this theory that Google, because I canceled the ad, they're like blacklisting my channel or whatever it's called. They're just burying my channel in the algorithm now. I'm getting a lot less views through the YouTube browse feature or recommended videos. Those are all gone pretty much too. It's basically mostly subscribers watching my videos now. So if you have a YouTube channel, word to the wise, never run an ad on your video because you have to eternally run ads then. If you turn the ad feature off through Google Ads, they'll say, oh, this guy, uh, we got to show him how good Google Ads was by giving him no views now. And I'm not going to run any more Google Ads, so I think I have to build my channel up again organically. And it has been a chore. Just look back at my last few videos, like the Arvala one. That's a freaking Hollywood grade video if I do say so myself and we got like 4,000 views on it. I do suspect that some of that is just because it's winter time, but when I canceled the Google ad for the Roadrunner Pro video, the analytics just dropped off a cliff. So if there's one takeaway, don't run Google ads on your YouTube channel, period. It's a bad idea. It works well for conversions on websites like pevoutlet.com, but it does not work well for YouTube. We just shaved off another five minutes of traffic going through the neighborhood here. Peel out that front tire again. We still have tons of battery left. I've got 
what, four out of five bars left, so I haven't even used 20% this whole video, and it's almost dark. Let's roll through the Nintendo campus real quick. So let's go uh, have a little fun. I'm sorry if it's all smudgy. This is what we get for riding in the rain. Like I said though, the RS Midnight, water resistant. I don't have to worry about the scooter not working, just the uh, GoPro and the microphones. This is so fun to do when it's dry though. Just shred through this little curvy part. I'm on street tires and I'm in dual motor on a 10,000 watt scooter though, so I'm not really trying to floor it here. I love these colors they got. Ooh, yellow, red, blue, and green. Let's try and get a cool thumbnail by the Nintendo sign. We got about 30 seconds before security comes out, I imagine. I wonder if we'll get like a copyright strike for having their logo in my thumbnail. We shall see. I love riding this thing around. I wish I didn't have to stop. I guess I don't really, but the GoPro footage probably looks like piss. What's that? What's that you say? Send it? Don't mind if I do. I ate like three racks of baby back ribs last week and I gained almost 10 pounds, believe it or not. So I'm like 221 pounds, probably 230 with my gear. Not the slimmest feller. Oh, green light up here. We can make that green light, right? Come on. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Heck yeah. Couldn't do that on a nine bot. I don't care how many volts you throw in it. Oh, but now let's just proceed to go 17. All right, you guys, I'm gonna call it. This has been a fun video. It's getting too dark for the GoPro though, so I'm gonna go. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video, and I'll catch you for the next ride, hopefully down in South America.